So what I'm going to do next is just to install some additional packages that may be useful on um, a system you might want to get into. There are a load of packages. Um, you can search the Gen 2 web page or even just Google for packages and find out if it's available on um, on Gen 2. Some of the more obvious ones, well, we've installed Firefox, which is a very good browser. There's Chromium that's available, but that does take a great deal of time on uh, 99, 3900K. 3, it takes about an hour, I think it is, to compile. Um, on a i7 4770 I've got, it takes approximately 10 hours, is it, I think, or 12 hours, of that sort of time. So it's very, very resource intensive. I'd imagine on this machine it would probably take three, maybe four hours. Um, I might install it just to get a, a tune of how um, how long it does take. Bearing in mind we've got LTO turned on and that is going to increase the compile time by quite a lot. Um, so if that's an issue, you may want to turn off LTO altogether and just take the minimal performance improvement that LTO offers um, as a hit. Um, so I could install that one. What I, what I planned on doing was installing Thunderbird to show you uh, um, another email client that I, I use, is what I use myself, um, and LibreOffice because that's a pretty full-fledged office package. Um, and yeah, I might have a go at Chromium as well. Um, there's things like Blender you can install, GIMP, I'm not even sure if GIMP probably doesn't come down as KDE, no, because it's a known package. Um, so yeah, I think I'll uh, get those installing and just demonstrate how easy it is to do that. So if I start with, say, Thunderbird, it really is just a case of emerge Thunderbird minus AV. And there, it's only got a few packages to install that are extra. Um, if, for example, I haven't installed Firefox, there may have been more packages because I imagine there would have been some packages which are shared between these two Mozilla um, programs. But apart from that, you can see that it comes up again with um, various use flags that are set or not set. Um, sometimes it tells you that something needs to be set. Uh, other times in this case, it's just going to build as it is. So I'll press enter there and get that building. And I guess if Firefox is anything to go by, which I think took about 20 minutes, this is going to take roughly the same amount of time. Okay, well that took a little bit longer than I thought it might do. Maybe the LTO wasn't turned on for Firefox, I can't remember now. But anyway, we should have somewhere a Thunderbird link. There it is there. And yeah, it needs to know details obviously before it comes up. But apart from that, it's a fully capable uh, email client to use. Yeah, I can't really show much more than this. But yeah, so that's a, a good little tool to have. Um, so what I thought I'd do is to emerge LibreOffice and do Chromium at the same time. So you don't, you're not limited to installing one thing at a time. Um, you can install more than one thing, and so maybe Blender. Uh, like I say, you can you know, probably GIMP as well is useful to have. Uh, just you know, find out what they're called. They're generally known by their names. Um, and just start the install like that. It'll work out all the dependencies and I was just gonna say, it'll tell you if it needs anything else installed. Uh, in this case it does, so it's likely that you'll need to do some rebuilds. Certainly Cairo is a global use flag. You'll probably wanna set globally, there it is there. So, don't know which, oh, this is for GIMP, it says here. There's some dependencies for Blender, one for 
or three for Chromium and one for LibreOffice. So they've all got some sort of dependency. Um, but I'm almost certain that some of them, uh, or some of these use flags, these global ones, will be shared amongst these applications we're installing and existing applications. So let's add in Cairo. It's actually generally better to add in the use flags because some of the spellings of them uh, can be a bit confusing. Um, and there's times before where I've thought of adding a use flag and I haven't because I've misspelled or left a character off or some typo. Uh, but as I say, some of them have got unusual spellings. Um, so free type needs broccoli. I think that's, yep, yeah, that's a global flag. So I'll do what I said before this time. Add in broccoli. Paste it in this time. So there's no ambiguity about whether it's been spelt correctly or not. Okay, we've got a few more additions there for FFmpeg, which are required by Blender. So XVID, I'm pretty certain. In fact, I think all of these are global flags. Um, all multimedia type flags. So there's X264, I just saw there. XVID is down there. So we need VPX as well. VPX. Okay, so VPX isn't. But Opus and MP3 are Opus. Yep, there's Opus and MP3 is just there. So they're all global apart from VPX. So I'm going to add in VPX for FFmpeg first. So this will be packaged up use. Uh, what was that one? That was media video. So VPX. And then I want to add in XVID, Opus, X264 and MP3. So... Xfid, Xfid, um, what was the rest of them? Xfid, X264, X264, MP3, and Opus. So Opus goes here and mp3 will be here mp3 okay so now i've got node.js inspector that's probably a local flag uh, inspector Yep, so that's in netlibs. Back to package short use, netlibs. Remember to take the version out, otherwise you'll have to specify it as an atom, which proceed, is preceded by an equal sign for that particular version, or a greater than sign if you want to use it for any version greater than that version. So XML sec needs NSS. Um, not sure about that. NSS. Okay, so it's a, a local flag. Devlibs XML sec. 
Tev Libs XML sec So profiler for Rust and Rust bin. I imagine again these are probably local flags. Profiles a global flag, but not profiler. So we'll have to add both of these in. So virtual Rust. Needs profiler, and the other one is devlang rust bin. Devlang rust bin. Devlang rust bin. So that should be all of the use flags that are required to be set. I must admit, I don't understand yet why packages have flags put forced on by default. Um, and yet other times you have situations like this where you've actually got to specify them. Whether it's because the ones you've got to specify have been induced by other flags that have been set, that you've set yourself, that could be the possibility. Um, but I've never seen an explanation for that. So these are all the packages are going to be installed. So you can see LibreOffice is obviously going to be bringing this localization package in. And then the first, so although I've specified the packages in a certain order, um, they'll be brought in in maybe a different order. Um, it's not a guaranteed order. But you can see Chromium is the last one and then GIMP's the one prior to that. And yet... I specified Blender in between Chromium, so the Blender will be installed at, at this um, run of the compilation um, before both of them, as you can see it's here. But because um, of the way it is, it could be some dependencies for Blender will be completed before others and Blender might actually um, be completed after them, it all depends on how things are. Now we have got some warnings here, um, we've still got the FFmpeg warnings, but there's some others that appeared here to do with, um, oh no, they're all to do with FFmpeg. Okay, but the thing I've got to do, first of all, before I install these packages, is to um, uh, do the changes that these use flags have induced in all the other, all the existing packages because there were some global flags that are set and they might not touch any existing one we've got but guarantee that they will do and certainly we've now got a situation here where a package called Pipewire is saying that if you've specified a FFmpeg you've got to specify the extra flag setting um, within Pipewire so you can see where is it uh, MPEG set there. Um, can't see where the extra is actually. Oh, there it is there. Yeah, so it's set off at the moment, but it's saying for pipe wire it has to be set. So let's add that in media video. And it was under pipe wire. And it needs extra. And if you want to know what extra was, you can do e query u pipe wire u for the use flags, and it tells you there build pw cat pw play pw record. And I'm almost certain that extra won't be a, a global flag because it's you know, fairly generic, really. It's not really descriptive at all, and you can see it's not there at all. Um, but it's probably worth just double checking that. Let's run our emerge on our packages, make sure nothing's changed there. Mm. 
No, that looks the same. So let's now rerun the update command. So that looks okay. Um, it's going to rebuild a lot of packages and obviously it's going to bring in a few more because of the changes we've made. Um, you can see all the changes here and how they're affecting existing packages. So these are the new libraries that are being brought in and then the packages that use those new libraries because of the new uh, use flags uh, are rebuilt. So I'm not sure how long this will take. That doesn't it? Oh, LLVM might take a while. So this might take another 20 minutes, half an hour as a wild guess. Um, and then we'll, once that's done, we'll build the other packages. So we've got a failure with GIMP. And it looks like that's the only failure. Uh, so we need to scroll back to see where the error actually is. Uh, there it is, strict aliasing. I we'll guess that, although it doesn't explicitly mention LTO, it could well be um, the cause of it. I've never experienced a build failure with GIMP before, so uh, especially as this LTO option, or at least the way it's implemented, is new to me, um, I'm guessing that's going to be the cause. So just check LibreOffice is built. Let's just check that works. So under Office, yeah, there's all the LibreOffice programs. So we can start with the main program that works. Let's open a, a writer document. Yeah, that's appeared to have loaded. Uh, in fact, I'll Pin that to favourites. To favourites. While I'm here, let's do a calc. That's fine. Uh, okay, I can only open one of those windows. New presentation. Yeah, that's loaded up fine. Uh, Can't get to the menu without getting rid of this window. New drawing. Yep, that seems to have loaded fine. Let's have a look at help about. Yep, that seems to have all worked correctly. You've got some details there about the system. So that looks fine. Um, and formula, that looks fine. And lastly, there's the database, which also looks, at least it, it loads fine. There's no errors, so happy with that. Some messages for other tools and libraries that were installed such as installing graphs which may be useful in certain situations blender so blender installed okay so let's load that one up uh, that'll be under graphics i imagine yep there it is at the top okay well, i'm not sure how to use this but uh, yeah that seems to be working fine no problems with that at all. Cool.
quit. And what else have we got? So GIMP failed. Okay, so it does mean that the other packages haven't installed. So let's get rid of Blender. And leave it. So it's GIMP and Chromium need to be installed. Okay, so I'm going to add GIMP to that package.env. Uh, right, what was the full atom? Is that one there? So put an equals in because of an atom, otherwise it won't rec it or recognize it or think it's a package name. The equal specifies an exact version, and you can use greater than or less than as well in combination or instead of the equals. So no lto.conf. Save that and we'll restart the build. In fact, what I'll do is I'll just rebuild GIMP by itself and then I'll install Chromium separately afterwards. This GIMP shouldn't take a particularly long time to build. Yeah, so as you can see, that's built successfully after just uh, under five minutes. So although it didn't mention the LTO error, um, I said the fact that I recognised myself that it was unusual for GIMP to fail, um, that was the reason why I thought I'd try that. So if you do get a package that fails and you can't fathom out, then it probably is going to be the LTO problem. So let's just try that quickly. Um, graphics that will be under, and there it is at the top. And yep, that's loaded fine. So I'm not going to go through it at all. The fact that it's loaded, and you can see it's loading plugins and whatnot, that's good enough for me. Let's see, help about. And yep, there's some little uh, animation there with all the authors, I imagine they are. So yep, that's fine. So the last thing I'm going to do is build Chromium. So this one's a bit of a heavyweight package. Um, so I'll get this one to build and it could take, uh, it's going to take over now, I'm pretty sure of that because it's a, a 13th generation i9 takes um, approximately an hour and as far as I know that's without LTO so this could be two hours or more. So get that going and wait for it to finish. Well, that took um, an unbelievable amount of time. Um, 400 minutes is approximately six hours. Uh, just over six hours. Um, so that's probably the LTO, which I guess shows that LTO is probably not worth it, especially for end packages such as this. Um, it might be worth for things like GCC and GLibc, but the amount of time that took, I think that's excessive. I might rerun that without LTO just to compare the difference in compile time. But now that's done, let's start it. It's actually added a link down there and that's loaded nice and quickly. So that seems to be working fine. And let's do an about. Yeah, that's working fine as well. So that's all the packages I'm going to install.